So regenerative medicine and stem cells really uh, discusses a field of medicine that talks about how can we reverse disease, kind of like ketamine infusions in a way, instead of reversing central pain conditions, we're trying to reverse peripheral pain conditions and peripheral degenerative conditions. So I, I have nothing to disclose with this lecture. Uh, nobody has paid me to do this lecture. And an outline of what we're going to be talking about today. So first and foremost, looking at an overview of inflammation. What is inflammation and how does it happen? What is regenerative medicine? What is this field of, of regeneration that we're talking about? Take a brief look at the history of stem cells, where we were and where we are now. Look at the types of stem cells that we have. There are many types of stem cells that can be harvested from many different locations. We're going to look at autologous stem cells, or stem cells that come from your own body, and then we're also going to look at non-autologous stem cells, so stem cells that come from someone else's body or from some other place. And finally, look at non-stem cell regenerative products, so products that are not stem cells, uh, but may still help with the regenerative process. So first, uh, let's look at inflammation. All right. So if you don't mind, I'm going to hold the microphone because I just think it's easier to move around. So inflammation, as we all know, is this process where things get inflamed. You know, we typically understand inflammation as joint inflammation, right? We've all had some joints swollen, our hands, our back, our neck. And that process is a complex process. It could be mediated by a bunch of different compounds, which we won't get into those details. But what we will talk about is that there is a physical and a chemical process that occurs during inflammation, and obviously then our brains perceive that as painful. Inflammation is not a bad thing. It can be used as a protective mechanism, and, and the body reacting to that inflammation is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's your body trying to protect itself from further injury. So that's why you can see in this picture, you know, you have this man holding his arm, and what's really happening is you can see from these arrows that are moving, back and forth, you know, there was an injury, it's telling the brain, hey, something bad is going on, and the brain is processing it, and it's telling the arm, well, try to stop that process. So here's the problem, though, sometimes, that occurs when we have pain, okay? So we have this protective mechanism, but that protective mechanism can backfire on us, because that protective mechanism then might delay our healing if things get too inflamed and they don't get better in a short period of time. It can decrease our appetite, it can decrease our function, which then leads to a whole list of, of uh, events. It can disrupt our sleep, our concentration, it can disrupt our, um, our cortisol levels, increase our, tr our stress. All of these things lead to that domino effect, you know, maybe you can't work as well then, maybe uh, you can't enjoy life as much. So when we see that pathologic process of chronic inflammation, we try to figure out how can we stop those things. Now, we won't get into a discussion today about, you know, all the pain management options that are available to reduce inflammation, reduce pain, but we will just sort of talk about this non-resolution of, of inflammation that occurs. Different conditions that have non-resolution of inflammation include things like cancer, obesity, multiple sclerosis, asthma. We also have things like irritable bowel syndrome. You have COPD, atherosclerosis, so that's, you know, when you have those plaques in the heart. Um, failure to uh, have the appropriate switch in macrophage and T cells, which are these cells that try to fight infections. Uh, there obviously is a, is a brain involvement in inflammation. Uh, there are various mediators, various you know, cells that are involved. So you can see it's not just one process, it's a complex process. This slide right here is, it can look complex on the surface and, and, and won't get into it in too much detail in an effort to try to make sure that everyone stays awake. But I do want to make sure that you guys all understand one point, which is inflammation and the immune system, okay, the immune system and the central nervous system are, are closely tied together. So that's why when, um, you know, sometimes we'll have, we'll have situations where, you know, you have, uh, say, fibromyalgia, for example, where peripherally things get inflamed and centrally uh, the process is occurring, they're actually tied together with each other. And sometimes our treatments should look at both the immune system as well as the central nervous system. This slide right here is really talking about, uh, you know, how we evolved, how our nervous system 
evolved and our, our, our in the in the immune system evolved over the course of time. Way back in the old days where we were single cell organisms and then multi cell organisms and then simple organisms, you know, we had more of regenerative pro uh, properties. We didn't have a very complex central nervous system. As we evolved as, as animals, we had more complex animals that weren't able to regenerate, but the nervous system became more complex. So, long story short, as we started becoming human beings, we started become, becoming more complex organisms from a central nervous system standpoint, and we stopped being able to regenerate. And here we are today. <laughs>